So hello everybody and welcome to this live stream of Thursday. I don't know, I always forget to look at the date, 5 October 2017 in case you see this much later as a regular video. So tonight I'm excited because we're going to record some Pachelbel again from the Hexacodum Apollinis. That's a bundle of six pieces he wrote in 1699. I'm going to record two pieces, two suites, two, two variation suites, how to say, maybe three depending on how the evening evolves, so to speak, uh, for a release on CD. Not in the first place on vinyl, but a CD release later this year or next year. And actually we're upgrading the website, so in a few weeks we should have some pages available where you actually could even pre-order that CD if you would interest, be interested in that. So. Uh, just in case you're new here to the channel, my name is Wim Winters and this channel is all about exploring the music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond, as we're doing now with Pachelbel, a little bit earlier than Bach, and sharing that through performances and actually also some research, which is a privilege to do, hopefully to inspire you as a musician or as a listener. And if that's the case, we'd love to have you join the community here by hitting that subscribe button. So. I'm going to say a quick hello in the chat and then I'm going to prepare for the recording because it's not, as I said at the beginning, just a recording for YouTube, which for which I do my best. It's for a CD recording. It's always a little bit different. So Mohamed Momo, welcome here. Melanus Marcus, great to have you. And Johannes Fontaine, I believe that's the first time you're here in the chat. If not, I'm sorry, but great to have you. So. Other people will join without uh, doubt. Anya is also in the chat if her computer is working because she had some problems with rebooting that system. So again, I will be here with you after recordings, maybe a little bit in between. I'm going to focus now on the recordings. Hope you have a great time listening. Hope you have a great time in the chat. And when the buckle bells are recorded, we meet again in the chat or we can um, have some Q&A if that's something we want to ask or we want you want to um, address. So without further ado, I would say if Anya's ready, I'm starting to get ready. Hello, Martin. Okay, switch the tablet off and we're going straight forward to Buckle Bell. I'm going to start with the fifth one. Then I'm going to re-record the third one. I did the previous, uh, the first a few weeks ago, but I need a, a, some, you know, um, some more takes. I made a stupid, silly, um, not a mistake, but I misread something in the last variation, so I better do it again. And if time allows, we're going to record the first one as well. I'm just looking in the direction of our kitchen where Anya is, if everything is okay there. Um, should I stop? No, I just, I'm going to play for a few minutes now just to warm up the fingers and to get in the concentration because you know these variations are great but they should have one one tempo yesterday by the way i did also ma i made a recording as well bach will tempo the clavier e minor i believe that's a great recording and perhaps if time allows could share some excerpts with you later the first part of Bella.
You ready? Yes. Okay. Hold cameras. Uh, yeah, camera. I'll take care of the cameras. No problem. Okay. I love the angle here, but, but just focusing on the hands. Try that again. And of course the main camera is underneath the webcam. Okay. I can start? Yeah. So I'm going to stop after each variation when I have to turn the pages because that's something we don't want to have on the recording. Thank you. 
Not bad.
Okay, I will do for the fifth one, just checking here. Just checking on the tape and that's fine. So we can just continue. Just continue. Yeah. So now we're going to the third one. F major. Just a bit of water, cold water will be better. Yeah. Yeah, I think so.
It's a small detail, such a drill, but it needs to end very fine. It's typical to play records. And this one.
Okay. Just checking about the tape in the kitchen and then maybe we do it one more time. Okay, I will change the tape and then we're going to make an, a second take for this uh, one. Yeah, it's quite difficult if you want to be on the edge actually, which is 30 second notes here. They need to be very punchy, very crisp, very good articulated and the left hand is difficult. And when the tempo increases it just a little bit, maybe not enough to change the character of the piece, but that's enough to uh, go over that line. And it depends on, yeah. My fingers are really warm, which is great, but they feel a little bit, they should be, yeah. I don't know. And all these tiny drills. It's a big, big clavichord for Pachel Bell. And maybe I like to have this, this um, big key depth actually. I think it's approaching four and a half, five millimeter even here. Not, not five, which is a little bit too much. And certainly here it gets, it, it has a little bit of a dip, but I'm hesitant to, to let Yoris uh, change that because it of course has an, an advantage that it, you produce more more sound when you can overcome that. The more key depth, the more sound, the more difficult it plays. Um, okay. So we're waiting for the next tape and actually we have ordered some new tapes. And finally they... It's a problem these days to order tape. Um, there's just one factory in Europe that still makes tape and it's the old Achva B R S F B A S B A S F tape which came only in 750 meters that sounds really long but that's not if you uh, think about it it's 15 inch per second it runs so it's about 33 centimeters so it's, what's that one two three is like this per second that it runs so 750 gives us 30 minutes of recording and one kilometer which I'm making now again she's ready gives us 40 minutes and that's not only 10 minutes longer but when you arrive when you arrive at 25 26 minutes you replace tape obviously because if it be last 10 minutes that's the downside Maybe not a downside of analog recording. The great side on that is that you there's just two microphones, one preamp, tube amplifier in the kitchen now, that's our studio, and one tape recorder. So Anya presses two buttons, play and record, and there's no computer in between. Which is great because computers are great. When it works. Yeah, I'm gonna start the tape. Thank you. 
Okay. Anya, mm -hmm. just uh, turn the tape off for a second. It's winter time. Oh, it's the winter is coming here. Yeah. There was this noise in the last note. The keyboard is noisy overall. But I cannot have it in the last note, of course. So that's the thing with this clavichord. And it's a kind of mystery because normally the keyboards Yoris makes are very silent. And it's not because I play so, so, lot, so much on them that they sometimes make these little crack noises. And we, we could fix that, but now the keyboard, the keyboard must be taken out, and not only that, the, the balance pins should be replaced by I don't know what. And that's something you want, I don't want to do, because that's, the, then the soundboard needs to be fixed, because that's really hammering on the instrument, and that's something I don't want. And so I have the, the same um, balance pin here. I just go through this. Must be very careful because this hole at the at the bottom. I don't know if you see that shouldn't become bigger. Right behind this, there the room is bigger, of course, because it needs to balance. But this one, this shouldn't be become bigger. And now it's fixed for a week. And summertime is never problems. Forty-two percent humidity. Okay. So, which is still okay, but the weather is changing, and you feel that in the instrument. It's a living thing. Anya, yeah. going just to record the last two bars of that same piece. Yeah, yeah, just two ten seconds. Okay, so if you are not tired over there, we go to do the first one as well. That's a great thing of recording at home. You can just do whatever you want, how you feel. And the original plan for making recordings actually, analog recordings, I'm talking now, I'm, about three years ago was Recording the partitas in Abbey Road studio, the same studio where the Beatles recorded uh, Sergeant Pepper and things like that. So there is a very, very symbolic studio, a very, I mean, it's in London, I believe. I actually don't know, I, I suppose it is, but it doesn't matter. And so I wrote a letter to Abbey Road Studios if I could come and record clavichords and and their response was, well, come over, schedule a, a meeting first. And actually they said no. And it was a good thing because then I started to look for a tape recorder and accidentally we came, oh, not accidentally, we came at Studio Analog Audio in Switzerland. So actually the successor of the studio brand and there were three very old, there were more tape recordings in restoration, but three very old C37 studios, which were the Sergeant Pepper recording devices they used in the 1960 somewhat 
to record that album. And that's a very symbolic album because it was one of the first albums where they had applied multi-track recording, but that's too complicated. Those machines were there, so a little bit of Abbey Road feel. They still belong to Abbey Road Studios. And there the journey with analog recording started. It's a great thing. And so also the, the, the matter of fact, just restoring the, the hi-fi installation I have is not top-notch. I mean, it's, it's decent, it's, it's, it's very good, but just listening to a vinyl disc or a record is so different than a CD, and I'm not talking about the quality of audio. That's, that's very personal, but it's just the, the touch, it's tangible. And the tape recorder is, is yeah. I wish you should you could hear that here. That's really beautiful. Just try the beginning. That will do. I've recorded this on the Christopher Clark Fratted Clever Court in the chapel one year ago. Okay.
Not the music, it's a beautiful piece.
Enjoy that. This first part is really beautiful, and sometimes music hits a level of silence that you cannot control, it just uh, happens. And then I sometimes wonder, like the beginning of the first take, and some parts of the second take, th th there is a kind of atmosphere that comes from somewhere. And then I think, yeah, the other recordings were, I think, great, good. But why is that not happening all the time? Yeah. That's the secret. And sometimes it is happening without noticing, without me noticing it. So, let me take a tablet. If you have uh, five minutes, for the Bach E minor, I did something weird there actually. Just look at the chat. Um, that's a difficult Bach piece. I don't think I have recorded that on YouTube and the cameras are off. I don't know when it is going to be uploaded. One of the coming weeks, but it's, it's a very difficult prelude. I, I, 
if you if you're interested leave me in the chat a quick note and then i'm going to share that with you uh, if you're too tired from me hearing Pachelbel, bell that's okay also and um, just see if yeah it's there's a lot of chat going on it's great i see andy larry kippy martin um Anya is my wife. Sophie was in the chat saying hello and good night. Oh yeah, Anya's Momo Johannes just going very quick. My mother is here. Nike. Philip Daniel. Um, great to have you all here. It's nice. Zacharia Bishop, Sebastian. Great. Nike asked if I play the hexacodium on organ. Yeah, I might do that once. I believe that the hexacodium is keyboard music. It feels like. Sometimes like the F minor. Uh, no, that's the, that's the um, sixth one. This, this one. That works great on organ as well. Um, Yeah, Andy writes the second take was better, slightly slower, more rhetorical, yeah. You take something and you give something sometimes, yeah. So I don't mind if you write what you're, I, I really appreciate if you write actually, that's the opposite. What kind, what takes you would prefer, I'm, I'm, I'm reading that. And it's, it's, of course, I've made now 130 recordings, music recordings for YouTube and you develop a kind of sense when you feel relaxed, when you feel great, but not too great, because if you start doing things that you were not planned or the, then it doesn't work, but overall you get a kind of sense of feeling when things are all, all, all right. Tonight it was all right, all right, certainly the last, the first uh, suite. The other ones as well, in the fifth one when I started there was more tension. I mean I was not nervous, that's not, not what I mean. But there was more tension in the movement, reflecting of physically, and it's hard to explain. But the movement, when when you set it, when you set it up, suddenly it's set a variation, but it actually is for all music. It should be there from the first moment and be very relaxed and natural, flowing, kind of perpetuum mobile. And it was okay, but I could feel more relaxed. Sometimes you don't hear that on the recording. Sometimes you do. So I have to wait for that. And two takes differ slightly. If it differs too much, means you're not prepared enough. Because for recording, it's not something that you let your your uh, intuition or you let your inspiration go. It's 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 performing what you think the piece is about. And of course, that's something you should have reflected way before. But it doesn't mean that it happens on that moment. It must, I think. You, you must strive to have always 95%, uh, but of course for recording you aim for 99.9. .9. It's way more interesting than 100%. So, that Chacon is written for organ, that's, that's nobody knows. Uh, it's, it's edited by Berenreiter. I also think in this edition, so it's a new one. Uh, with three bars, with three staves, so with the pedal, but that's not original. Um, there is, I believe, only one manuscript. The hexacodium, of course, is printed. The Chacone is one manuscript, it's preserved. I don't know, really, but there's one manuscript, one copy of a manuscript preserved in Brussels um, library, but that's a 19th century copy. Um, it was exchangeable in that time. And actually, when you play, um, I, I can imagine that the Chaconne was primarily meant for organ, maybe. Like you have other Chaconnes in D minor, that's difficult to play on keyboard, you need a pedal. But that Chaconne works great just by playing at all the notes on the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, Andy asks that, the D minor Chaconne, that's, that's playable on keyboard, but not all the parts. Let's see if I have it here. I should 
have it because when I go to make a CD and it's something you can help me reflect upon, the hexachord of course is not enough, so I must have some other buckle belt pieces. Um, let me see. Yeah, the F minor is. Yeah, I've recorded that. That's the video with Evelyn dancing. It's, it's, she does that so beautiful there. So here's the score. It's a little bit, of course, a dark setup, but you won't see it perhaps. But that's the 1970 so much Berenreiter edition. You have an earlier one. So this is different. And it works great. just before this, there you need the organ pedal, I think. Here, the common problems. So this is, yeah, organ music. Well, you could, of course, change some things. The beautiful fugues that work great on organ and keyboard. I'm, I'm planning for a long time to make also recordings on organ with this music, but it's about time and prayer priorities. Uh, Flex, nice to have you. So, what would you think of that? I just give you an idea of this Bach prelude to close this with this live stream um, just very quick from Pachelbel to Bach that's not a big big step should find it and it's over here so I'm continuing with the Voltaire Peter Clavier we did eight in the summer as a project we left the project um, format so to say but of course I'm continuing with the with the part with the with not with the partitas, with the Walter and with the clavier, because that's the next big recording project. And one of the difficult things here, um, so I'm, I don't know if I can still can play it on, on a certain level, but I'm a little bit tired now, but just try. That's at the beginning, you have this, you have this left hand that's going all over the place, it's always the same. is contrasting a lot with that. It's kind of, it's very expressive. And you have these bows here. So if Bach wants you to emphasize, to have this Zeusser uh, figure, Suspiratio. Then you have a kind of normal tempo ordinary. I keep the left hand in the bass note. And so, but then you have presto here. And as I did in the C minor, you have the same thing. You have also presto. I didn't play faster there because I think the presto is in the writing of the music. Here it's a bit the same, but if you continue this just a normal tempo or denier from the beginning, it's getting very long then, and there is no way that I've found to vary the piece, to make it have a new life again. It works great until the presto this time, but I, will, I will show you in a minute. Because the right hand has this kind of expressivity. like captured like it's in prison prison taken by the left hand left hand is always continuing the right hand is just 
like a, yeah, a teenager behaving. And then comes the presto, but if you double there the tempo... Which works actually not bad at all. But continuing that tempo until the end, it doesn't make sense either, because then you come here... It's there the context, the texture is way too big to have this, this increase in tempo. So I decided to do something that is not in the score. And I will show you. And I believe it's a great effect. And if that's what Bach meant, I really don't know. But at the moment, I, I don't care. It should have been more clear to us here. So I just made my own version here. This is a piece I've been really doubting for, for ages how to play that, how to keep the attention. And I will share with you. Again, it's just playing after an hour, hour of recording. So uh, don't mind the mistakes and, and, and if it's not really on the highest level, but you get the point. One way or another, I feel that this piece gets a kind of a weird unity now. And of course, this dramatic moment, you know. I like that. So, yeah, I don't know if that's original or authentic. I don't know. Um, I 
but I like it. And then of course you have this great uke. I don't know if I can play that still because that's a rather new piece. I mean, in a way that's difficult. <laughs> this Bach I think we're going to close the live stream tomorrow we have a very important day because our youngest daughter Evelyn she will be she becomes six years and so she's looking forward and we all are actually for her it's it's of course a wonderful age to have a birthday and we have some special things for her she is really crazy on crazy on horses and might have to do something we have here uh, a farm with horses uh, next door, so stables. So we're surrounded by horses. But uh, and actually, Sunday she's going. But don't tell her she's going to uh, ride for the first time really on a horse. So to to learn to how to ride a horse, I think that's good English. I hope, and that's what we're looking for. But on Sunday evening, we will have a kind of live stream. I will show you. I will play for you. Just side reads Sonatinus by Clementi again, very different than Pachel Bell and Bach, and also not too diff different because it's only so, ma so much years later. But the Sonatinas, I was asked by someone to play the C major one, and so I started to play. And you know, I'm, I really like music of Clementi, but I also only did some sonatas and some preludes and fugues. He wrote wonderful preludes and fugues, by the way. Czerny also did. And so the Sonatinas, of course, I knew the C major one. And I thought, well, that's great music. And since I'm working hard with Kostas, uh, Papadopoulos, the Greek, uh, Greek friend, the, grand, friend, the composer, he, he wrote six so-called easy sonatas, quote unquote, they're not really easy. I thought they fit perfectly with Clementi because they're a little bit more difficult. But as I heard Kostas, not complain but say well it's really challenging to limit yourself technically in writing in that style Clementi does it so well and you often hear people write and talk about Clementi certainly these sonatines that it is boring music and it's not great but it's of the best of the best music you can think about it's really great and it's also great for learning for students it's even tailor-made to their taste I'm sure if you have students and you let them play the sonatinas it's really successful and so that's one of the projects for the coming months year I don't know I'm certainly going to record those PS trees opus number 36 six sonatas and then 37 I believe are four and 38 also four I don't know so I will do them all they're not too difficult of course but if you want to get them right there, uh, again, that's for Sunday, 9 p.m. Central European 
summertime i think that's still summertime or just time because the summertime we're going to leave that for winter time and then next live stream after that i don't know we have to schedule that but that's the next one on sunday so anyway guys thank you for watching being with me here um for the recording of the buckle bell and we see each other very soon again bye